It's Morphin' Time! From days of long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The legend of Voltron, Defender of the Universe. Hello, this is Sad here, and welcome to the second half of my Sol and Voltron review. And I call it the second half, this is the other Voltron we received in North America way back in the day. And that's the Vehicle Force Voltron is finally here. Uh, completing several life goals of mine. Maybe not life goals, but collecting goals, and it just has a lot of sentimental value personally, which we'll talk about in the video. So without further ado, grab some popcorn, grab a drink, strap yourselves in, because this is gonna be a long one, and we're gonna take a look at Soldier Yoken GX88. Voltron 1. So starting off with the packaging, uh, of course this is the Voltron outer slipcover that's done through the Bluefin brand's international release. Uh, Soldier Gokin GX88 Voltron 1. I like how it put Voltron 1. Uh, the Go Lion Voltron packaging just said GX71 Voltron, uh, not Voltron 3, probably because that would confuse people, but I thought, you know, instead of putting like Vehicle Force Voltron or something like that, I like I like the Voltron one. It's a callback to the Matchbox stuff. Of course, Voltron 2 never came to exist. Albagas. Oh, beautiful Albagas never came over. But, uh, you know, it would be funny if one day we did get a Soldier Goku and Albagas and suddenly it was a Voltron packaging said Voltron 2. That would be hilarious, but I don't think it's happening. Anyways, uh, so nice Voltron logo, everything like that. Uh, on the side, you've got the Sky Vehicle, the Sea Vehicle, and the Land Vehicle. Um, so the three forms there and then also the robot on the back it's all of the text in English so when you slip the slip cover off and it's all in Japanese you're not confused as to what it's showing you same thing here except now it says Dairuga 15 uh, and this front of the box let's see you know, side pictures the front of the box of course is very similar to how the original Dairuga packaging looked for the Popa Nika release so I do kind of like how it's reminiscent of that um, and that I say is more so than the Go Lion, which kind of looked new. This gives me a very classic Popa Nika vibe. Um, of course, the Kuraga, Kairaga, and Rikuraga, um, and then like the whole 15 vehicles thing. So I, I really do like this box art. Um, much like with the Go Lion, I, I do like the slip cover just because I did buy this for Voltron purposes primarily, even though I, have, I do like Die Rugger as a series, I, I do find Vehicle Voltron to be but more exciting. Uh, and then, of course, top of the box, you got a picture of him with the sword, which is actually, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, because I'm bouncing packaging around, it is that art. So that art is on the top. So really nice. Uh, I do find it funny that he is a oops, standing packaging as opposed to Go Lion's um, landscape. It's like a portrait one. So that's kind of, they work together. Looking at the inner contents of the packaging, uh, we have a plastic tray for all the accessories, the hands and everything. And then we have the actual tray for the parts. And look at this. Uh, this is just awesome. I love that we got, you know, Rugger 1, Rugger 2, Rugger 3, Rugger 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then it also just has, like, you know, Die Rugger fighting formation on it. Um, so it's under cardboard, it's under plastic, it's a cardboard insert. I love this. It's so classic. Um, I'll never, probably, I'll yeah, I never say never, but I'll probably never own a uh, Popanika Die Rugger. And this just kind of gives me that, that Popanika feel. So really nice, really wonderful. So here's the air team. The air team, of course, kind of ends up taking the lead character role since uh, vehicle number one is piloted by the lead character of the show, essentially. Um, and so it kind of ends up being the primary team. They also make the torso and head of Voltron. So we have the Command Jet Explorer, vehicle number one. We have the Strato Weapons Module, which is vehicle number two. We have the Advanced Recon Helicopters, three and four. Uh, we also have the Falcon Jet Fighter, which is number five. So starting to look at the first vehicle. Very, very well detailed. This, of course, forming the head, the very vital part. Uh, and what surprised me on these is the, the actual wheels. Now these aren't, these do turn, I think. They're very stiff, uh, but they do turn. They fold away pretty nice, and this back panel does come off for some extra accessories later involving the Electro Whip. Uh, but the fact that these actually open up is pretty amazing, even if uh, this part does like to pop off a little bit. Uh, it doesn't pop off unless you try to touch it, but 
pretty neat overall. Um, let's just take a look at the Falcon Jet Fighter. Uh, this thing is really cool. I love, I've always loved the look of this. And the fact the wings pivot so that this can be more flush towards the chest of the robot is pretty awesome, and I really do like that. Um, same thing here. He's got actual wheels. They don't really move too well, but they're there. They're definitely represented, and that's pretty awesome. Um, of course, the Advanced Recon helicopters are very similar. Uh, these are the standard helicopter blades. These are the ones that look the most accurate to the show when they're in the helicopter modes. Of course, they got landing gear, so we got these here and here, which is pretty nice. There is one thing with the helicopters is they have a tendency, if you have them flat like this, they're fine, but when they're on the, the stands, they'll, they'll tilt one way or another, especially this way, because that's where the shoulder joint is. Um, but here's number three, the Advanced Recon Helicopter number three. Um, I love that the rotors spin nice and easy. Um, they look really good, look really nice. They're very die cast. Um, see, because there's one side that will push in for combination, and the other side will stay out for the joint, which is why it ends up tipping. Um, but really cool there. And then we have the Strato modu Weapons Module, uh, which is a pretty neat design. It's a kind of a giant block. It's it's mostly meant to just be the chest component for Die Rugger. And I do like that this part slides up, um, which gives it a, a good difference in look. And the most impressive part of this is the fact that on this we have real working rubber treads. A little tricky to work on this guy because the tires or the whole tread base spins. But as you can see, the actual rubber treads work on both sides. And that that's pretty impressive, uh, if I do say so. So what's neat too, of course, like I said, these combine into a uh, vehicle on their own. So we can fold these up, bring this in. The front portion of this, let's see, we gotta turn the base like that. The Strato Fighter here, the whatever we're calling it, plugs in there. And actually an interesting note is that this red button will fire it out. Uh, it's kind of an action gimmick, it's kind of reminiscent of the original, but it's ready for this thing to spring in so that it locks into place. And that is pretty cool. I, I'm actually really, I really do love that. The rotors also can remove off of the helicopters. So we can go with the smaller rotors for this combination. And uh, let's see, we'll push that in. And this will go on this side. That's, and then we're gonna swap the rotor out as well. There's plenty of rotor options on these guys too. It's basically every look you could imagine. So we'll pop that in, push that in. So it kind of balances the whole vehicle out. And then lastly, this is the scariest part. Little clips here, flip out. And then this has to come in and land on here. And I wanna make sure I do it right because it's a little, oh, it didn't line up. It's gotta be centered or else it won't clip into place all the way. So there you go. So that's kind of the first vehicle. It is the air team vehicle for Voltron. It's the Q Rugger, I think, in Die Rugger. Um, don't quote me on that. But it's kind of a neat vehicle, I think, just because, you know, you've got this kind of thing. And it's actually one of the quirks of the original Popanika version was that uh, each set of three vehicles was sold on its own, in addition to the box set of Die Rugger. So that actually is pretty cool. Um, so it's really neat. I, I love that. You know, I like that, you know, this thing is like 15 vehicles, it's huge, it's a little overwhelming, but when it comes down to it, you have these individual vehicles it can break down to, so it's kind of like a, you know, make it a three-piece robot in that regard. So next up is the C-Team, which I think there was one time that the planes flew underwater, and then I was like, why do you have a C-Team? Which I guess also, the planes flew on land, and it's like, why do you have a land team? They, they didn't really separate the teams very much into different types, they all kind of did everything which is fine. It worked for the show. It's not something I really questioned until I was an adult. So it's not like watching Vehicle Voltron as a kid and I was like, wait, why do the land vehicles fly in space? Didn't really notice. Um, so let's talk about this. The vehicles here, let's talk about this. I'm making wonderful transitions, but we've got number six, the communications module, number seven, space prober, number eight, space prober two, the electric boogaloo, Number nine, the multi wheeled explorer, and number 10, the multi wheeled explorer 2, Fast and the Furious. So, these are actually pretty cool. Um, it is kind of funny that these used to have, you know, one, two, one, two. Um, 
but they are very similar. So looking at this guy, this guy's different it's a communications module, which I think is kind of interesting. It's like th this vehicle is all about communication. I think I had it backwards. I think it's supposed to go this way. Um, this little antenna piece and these pieces are kind of fun, but I do like the little turbines on it. It does look very sea aquatic-y where like one of the vehicles for, yeah, one of the vehicles on the air team has treads. <laughs> like, I, I was like, oh cool, rubber treads. And I didn't even realize to mention, yeah, why does the air team have treads? Uh, these two guys, little submarine looking dudes. And uh, yeah, they're kind of neat. I do like them. They're just kind of like little submarines, but uh, they kind of are basically just thighs. And I think that that's part of the appeal, I think, is that the fact that they made these as kind of like robot components first and then try to shape them into vehicles after. Because uh, again, here's some more treads for the C team. These are solid, by the way. Um, this is These are the solid, most solid, heaviest components individually, because this whole section, like the whole main section of this is die cast on both of them because they're the legs and that's awesome. Um, I do like the design of these. I actually had a bootleg of one of them, of the original one. Um, so it's kind of neat to have an official one. And then the tank treads also uh, work here. So are the, not tank treads specifically, because not tanks, but they're treads, they work. Um, it's pretty awesome. You can see there's a little groove on one of the things of where it was sitting in the package like that. So got that going on, but it's pretty neat. Actually, um, if you really want to, it does move, it does move on the treads. I'm trying to line them back up to how they were just because it kind of naturally resets there. And here, of course, we have the other vehicle. So I think, you know, I like how the cockpits are different. I didn't really notice them being different before, but it makes sense. And I do like the color coordination of those. So to form up the C team vehicle, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than the air team one, which is basically using a lot of the same connectors as what will eventually be die rugger. Um, the C team is relatively straightforward as well, but you know, we got a couple of variations. So first up, this part back here needs to fold out on both of these. And so of course, red will plug into red. But first here, we got to push this up and make sure this panel folds. And actually, it kind of likes to do this where it doesn't want to move, but it's like a double joint and it's like that and it flips all the way around. And this plugs in like so, like this in so we got that this as well I'm make sure it folds up folds around this in here like that and like this we don't even have to do I don't think we have to do anything to the communication module I think that thing stays the same you can tell how many times I've done this guys it's going great yeah the communication model pretty much stays the same but instead we have these little side things which pop out like this to bring out more missile fire. You do that on either side and then attach one here like that and attach one here like that. Sort of like it's connected. So this one did not connect because I don't think I got, yeah, that's got to go all the way and that plugs in. And then we have the C-Team vehicle. Now because these are the legs and the part of the chest piece, this actually is really sturdy, uh, which I really do like. This thing is the heftiest, like in terms of combined robot stuff, this is like one of the heftiest combined things, especially for its size. Like this thing is weighty and I, I really do like that. Um, but I like the way that this one looks. This one looks like a giant like submarine battle tank thing and it's awesome. Uh, it's just really awesome. All right, so we come to the final group of vehicles, the land team. The land team, of course, it features cars and trucks and stuff, and they all fly through space, and that's fine. Uh, first up, number 11, jet radar station. Number 12, rotating personal carrier. Number 13, rotate armored equipment carrier. Uh, number 14 is the all-terrain space vehicle. And then number 15 is the all-terrain space vehicle, too. Uh, don't ask me why I decided to pick those up as I did this instead of just my normal kind of pointed them, but whatever, it does not matter because this is my review series. So, uh, let's look at these. Uh, the number 11 module here, is it number 11? yeah, number 11. This one's really cool. I actually really like the way it looks. Uh, it's got that same kind of fake tread because it's so small, um, but I do like the little radar pop-up. Kind of reminds me, it's like each of the each of the teams provides like a part of the torso and so this is kind of neat to have that 
the two arm pieces are looking like arms. Uh, no matter what they do, they're going to be basically always look like robot hands. That's just a nature of the business here. But I think my favorite ones, of course, are the cars. I think it's some of the coolest looking vehicles. It's like a very 80s car look. Uh, the slot in the top is kind of annoying, but in the same time, it kind of looks like a futuristic truck bed in a way. And this one rolls really well. Like, these got rubber tires. They're rock solid die cast. They feel like a heavy Tonka item, like an old school Tonka truck. Um, this one's also really cool. I like I like the way it looks. And the uh, the tires kind of stick on this one, which I wish wasn't the case, but it's not too big of a deal. And don't worry, the tires do not become an issue. Like your <laughs> die rugger combined form does not have tires that can allow it to just roll off of a shelf. That was one of my concerns going in. And I'm happy to report that's not the case. Now, of course, this has a combination mode between the five vehicles. So to do that, we're gonna take the all-terrain space vehicle two, flip this up, all-terrain space vehicle one, flip up this, so it's a little, little clippy tab things. And then we're gonna take the uh, number 11 vehicle and it's gonna clip onto the the two of them. So we're gonna fold that down and away, uh, and then we're gonna clip this here. And the way you know what direction to clip it on, so look at this very closely there, is to notice that there's slots in the front because the slots in the front are how you're gonna get the rest of the combination going. So we're gonna get this lined up, plugged on, make sure these don't collapse because it's still gotta roll. And then there's the slots in the hands. And actually, this one needs to go over here because I'm gonna end up screwing that up and misplacing the order of the vehicles later on because these are very identical. And boom, there's the land vehicle. Uh, this one's kind of neat. I mean, it does look like all of them just kind of piled on and it's, it's like that, but I also kind of imagine it, and this is always how I've imagined it in the show is like, it's just gonna roll and, and see because extra wheel power here. It's just gonna roll and punch things and <laughs> almost roll off the table, but it just kind of rolls around and is like a giant battering ram and I love it. Um, it looks looks cool. I like it. Um, it's it's not the best looking. I think the C team vehicle is the best looking out of the three, but uh, this one's fun. So here we have the three vehicles together. Now having the air team, C team, and land team all together like this is pretty awesome. Uh, this is actually one of the variations of how the original Popanica toy was sold. Um, from what I understand from toy commercials, you could actually purchase each team individually if you wanted to break up the cost of the huge set. Um, so it's really nice to have these, and I do think these look really nice. I think still the C team is my favorite. Uh, I think air team is kind of my second favorite, and land team is my, my la least favorite. Uh, but I think it's really cool how there was an alternate configuration for these. It wasn't just 15 vehicles make one robot. It's like 15 vehicles make three smaller vehicles or three bigger vehicles, and then that becomes a bigger robot. So I think it's really cool. Um, I just I, it's it's one of the things I really love about this design. Let's go Voltron Force. Voltron will be back after these messages. For all your hero news, check out Hero Club. Just type in your search engine www hero-club.com And now, back to Voltron, Defender of the Universe. Let's go Voltron Force. So, now that we have the 15 vehicles all separated, everything is back to its default position. We're going to work our way from the bottom up. So, starting with the cars, we're just going to put them kind of here, get them prepped, and then going to take the uh, big submarines. Now these actually do have some removable bits. These could stay on. Uh, you're gonna collapse these in. You could leave them on. However, they do not stay as well as I think anything should, and it's not accurate. So we're gonna put those off to the side. There is a place to put those on the stand. And just like before, we're gonna be flipping these around like that. However, now we're gonna open up the back side and bring out and fold this panel in and bring down this giant mechanism. Now this can be kind of tricky because it is solid die cast. This is going to come down uh, and it does extend out for extra articulation bend. But we're going to do that for now uh, and this is going to attach to the black car vehicle. Now when we slide this in it's going to slide all the way in and then we're going to push the tires down like that and it'll lock it in place. So not only, uh, if we get this all lined up so it clicks, so not only will this not slide off 
these tires are now higher up. So it does have a little bit of roll, but it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, and this also allows for the ankle tilts to happen. So we're gonna just collapse that down for the moment. And then we'll do the same with the other leg. Okay, so now at this stage, I did notice I didn't click get this all the way clicked in here. It's got to click in really tight so that way nothing moves. Now, for me, you can already see there's getting some good height on this guy. We're going to attach the thighs. So the thighs, of course, are color coordinated, so the yellow fin matches up with the yellow there. Now, these are actually interesting where before we just flip these out, we're actually going to flip and push these in. To get these back out again, uh, in the case of transformation, you push down, which releases the tab to open them up. Uh, which I think is a brilliant little system there. So we're gonna plug that on there and do the same with the other side. And now we need to adjust our camera. Next up, we have the waist piece. So we're gonna make sure to fold this away like we did before. Now this one's actually kind of interesting because it kind of forgets which side to look at it from, but two of these panels pop open here. There, there. So these two panels pop open and they slide back into place pretty awesome. Uh, we're then going to fold this out and like this and then bring this hip piece out like that. And so that'll essentially create the hip joint. Uh, and then we can bring this back in. And these of course open up so that way we can actually have articulation later, uh, which is pretty amazing. So we got that. I don't think we do anything to the top here because yeah, this is all hinged that way. So then we got to insert the legs. And once that's all secured, we're ready to continue forward up the top of the robot. So now we've gotten to the waist here. There's another panel, and this one is kind of tricky to do on camera. It's incredibly difficult to lift up. because It's very tight, but once it's lift up, you actually can line it up and it slides in nice and neat there. And so with that, you can kind of see you got another hole, which is going to lead to the next piece. Next piece, of course, being this good old communications module from the C team. You're going to fold that thing away. And then once you got that, you're like, oh, how, which direction does it go? Does it go this way or does it go this way? And so there's actually a way to do this. So this one here rotates. That's the waist joint. This one up here pulls back and out. And that is like a forward ab crunch. So the thing is, is that is officially speaking, it's supposed to go this way. You can cover this by the jet. If you want to go this way, if you want to do like crazy arched back poses, totally an option. Personally speaking, I want the waist swivel kind of being here. So we're going to plug that right on there uh, and make sure it's in. And then if you lift up, it should be good to release that. There's a little button between the, the things here that will release that tab. So once that's in, actually push it and it holds. So you're good to go. Uh, the, the construction is really solid, even if some of the panels are finicky. Uh, this is also where we bring in this guy. So we're going to fold these up, push this down. Otherwise, this thing stays the same. And this panel opens up and just like the others, slides away. So that'll be the peg. And of course, that's where the head goes. So we'll just get this on here. And just like with the bottom part, um, there actually, this one doesn't have a release tab, oddly enough. This one, I think you're supposed to just pull. Oh no, no, the same release tab for the head, actually, it releases this here and it releases the connection here. So it pushes this out and it releases those. So it's actually a double locking tab there, which is pretty nice. And of course you gotta change camera angles just one more time. So now that we've got the body form, let's do the arms. Now the arms are a little confusing and that's because the blue fist goes on the red arm and the red fist goes on the blue arm. So we're gonna take the red arm push this in, and the blue will attach. And these actually don't have any extra locking mechanisms. I'm gonna fold the landing gear away. Uh, these just slide in like this. And then they click, and you turn the hand here. Now you've got an arm, and you plug it on, and you're good to go. Next up, of course, we'll form the head. This one goes straight in here, just like it did for the command module. And you pull these open, you got the face, Bring this here. Um, also, the wheels in the back are all folded away. Bring these down here. Before we do this, I actually totally space this. The tires on the arms need to fold back uh, just so they're out of the way. And they actually fold in sets of two. But be careful not to pull on the rubber part because the rubber tires could come off. 
And then, of course, now that we've formed everything there, the final touch to the vehicle Voltron is the chest jet itself. It's known, so line it up, two clips to the two slots. That, fold those back, bring those down. And now you've completed Die Rugger 15 slash Vehicle Voltron. And if you want it to be more show accurate, boom, there you go. And yeah, we need a different angle to look at this guy. Now that we have Vehicle Voltron slash Die Rugger 15 all assembled, the first thing I have to do, and this is something where the Japanese fandom of these original versions of these shows that don't know the Voltron history are like, why? We could put these two together. Uh, so here, of course, we have Go Lion slash Lion Force Voltron slash Voltron 3 next to Die Rugger 15 slash Vehicle Voltron slash Voltron 1. Uh, this is pretty awesome. This is, um, okay, this is part of the reason why I actually ended up buying uh, Go Lion slash, slash uh, Lion Voltron. Um, this is the thing, is that when it comes down to it for me, uh, my history with Voltron. As I've talked about in the Lion Voltron review, the original Voltron series is kind of my biggest attachment to this franchise. I have watched Third Dimension, Force, Legendary Defender, I've read, you know, several comic reboots, but the original series itself is the stuff that I always go back to. Um, so on that note, I've always really wanted to have a Lion Voltron and a Vehicle Voltron that are in the same scale together, that are in the same size and the same styling so that they can work together just like they did in Fleet of Doom. Fleet of Doom was not a great movie. Let's not pretend that it was amazing, but the seeing the two Voltrons work together was the best part of that whole thing. And especially considering the fact that, you know, you had two completely different anime series that were being merged together to be a shared universe that poor Albagas got left out on. And so to have that movie at least represent a crossover, to have that connection, I think was wonderful. And to have this where Bandai said, okay, we're doing, we did Go Lion. Go Lion is of course, you know, it's one of the classic Hoponika uh, Shigokin releases. It being in Soul Shigokin makes total sense and you can market it to the Voltron fan base in America. And then of course, you know, with Die Rugger 15, it took, you know, this was a good three years apart uh, it took a while for us to get this, and it was questioning for a time. It was my most wanted Soul Edge Gokin release. I was like, Bandai, please make Die Rugger 15 to go with Go Lion. Because while it may not mean much in Japan, it means a lot, I think, to the American audience. And it means a lot to me. This is exactly what I wanted for so long. And it's I, I've had... If I ever had the money, I probably would have gotten an original vehicle Voltron, since the only one that was officially produced outside of, yeah, no, it was the American one, and then this, um, the yeah, the Pope, the Popey, the Matchbox, and then this one are the only official ones released. And I, I never had a chance to get those if having that money, because it was so expensive to get all the rotors and all the pieces, and you'd have to get the Japanese one in order to get the sword. Very complicated stuff. And then on top of that, I never had a Lion Voltron that was going to be big enough. It was either going to be too big, like the Playmates one, which I ended up not getting, or too small, like the Matchbox or the, the Trend Masters. And so I've always wanted this. This is exactly what I've wanted on my shelf as this is like what I want from Voltron a six inch action figures all the pilots that would be amazing but when it comes down to the basis of it this is what I've really wanted for for most of my life now and it feels wonderful having both of these here so of course taking a look at detail uh it's mostly what we've seen before this being a combining robot the biggest thing here is the face the face of course it just looks perfect there is no swappable face like there was on Go Lion. And that, I think, is fine. Uh, first of all, speaking, most of the time, Die Rugger did have this standard face on him, um, having, again, watched all of the Ultron and all of Die Rugger. I, I think he had different expressions at some point, but it was nothing major, and I don't end up using the screaming face very much on, um, on Lion Voltron. But I think the main reason there is no swappable face is because of this. Whereas Lion Voltron, it's a very simple flip-down-the-mouth thing. This is a double-sided... This spring loads back, like this face is actually, actually spring loads back to avoid the little panels. And so I don't think it was really possible to do an alternate face, especially with the way that the neck has to be designed since it does separate. So uh, this is fine with me, I'm good with that. I love the way the chest looks because 
instead of having like a solid plastic jet like the old days where it would kind of stick out from the base of it, uh, this actually having this whole thing fold down and out looks just awesome. I, I really do like that. Uh, the rotors. Now, I think the only thing I would have done a little different um, is maybe had an option to push these in. Uh, I know there's not much clearance in there, but the little nub sticking out, if you want the animation accurate look, is kind of annoying. Uh, I mean, you can totally put these rotors on here if you want to just cover them, uh, which is kind of a more toy toy look uh, than, than animation look. So it, it, this is an option, but that's kind of my only real complaint there. Otherwise, he just looks very seamless, very sturdy, very strong. Uh, it's a very good silhouette. I mean, looking at the back, the way that all the wheels fold away, everything landing gear wise, there's nothing sticking out. It's It looks solid. Like honestly, outside of a couple things, you, you'd be hard pressed to know that this thing actually splits into 15 vehicles. Now, because of the 15 vehicle nature, I don't think he's as sturdy as Lion Voltron. With Lion Voltron, you can kind of pick him up and nothing really wobbles. Well, this guy kind of has a little bit of wobble going on with the nature of how the connections are. Uh, and that's just because of the nature of the design. There's really nothing more that could be done there. Um, certainly sturdier than the original, I can tell you that much. Articulation wise, he's actually got quite a bit. So first up, the neck pivots left and right. Back panel keeps coming off. So left and right, it actually could go 360. Yeah, there we go. It clears 360, um, so that's pretty cool. You've got shoulders that move 360, of course. Uh, the outward movement here is kind of interesting. It's a double kind of hinge there, uh, which is pretty impressive. You actually do have a butterfly forward. As you can see there, it does move forward, so sort of sword poses. The arms, they have a bicep swivel. They got an elbow, double, it's a double elbow except it popped out. Uh, this is one of the things, if you go too far on the elbow, it will have a release tab. These little fins are basically what connects these two together. And I think I just didn't get this one in all the way because this one goes and then it, it bends again. So you get kind of a double elbow on it. And you got wrist swivels. Uh, these hands actually open up so you can hold weapons with the traditional mecha hands. We'll get to more of that later. Uh, these actually do pull out a bit for the swappable, they do have actually additional articulation inside. So that's pretty amazing. But once we get that back on there, um, so you got that going on. Of course, like I said, the torso does move forward, though I kind of find it to be a little sticky. Uh, it, it moves, like it's certainly like you can get it arched back a little bit, which can be helpful for some poses. Then you got the waist swivel, which is just a left and right. It doesn't go 360 arms out of the way, really tight joints in a lot of places, the hips. So these panels actually do open up, uh, much like a skirt on like a Gundam figure or something. Not the back skirt, but they do move out all the way. They do move forward pretty good. They rotate there, they double joint the knee and it's a slight double joint. So it's like a full bend there. And then you can go a little bit farther because of that extra joint there. So that's pretty nice. And then like I said about the feet, uh, which I showed earlier when I was just showing the joint itself, the feet actually can pull down, they can pivot all the way back, they can pivot all the way left, and they can also move a bit forward and back without popping apart, and the chest jet came off. Okay, so these actually do have a lot of range of movement. Because of the way the wheels are up, they actually don't cause any uh, sliding issues. Like this guy, I think because of his weight too, and the rubber tires holding it in place, he doesn't roll, he, he would drag, so that's good. There's no, there's no concern of him just up and rolling off a shelf, uh, which is one of the, the biggest, I think, issues with some of the versions, like the, the unofficial Miracle Works version did that too. So anyways, back to that. I think, honestly, articulation is really solid. Robot mode's really solid. He looks fantastic, but he also comes with a ton of accessories. So let's break that down. Here is everything that the Soul Jokin Die Rugger 15 Vehicle Voltron set comes with. It's a lot. Five sets of rotors, all the versions of all the weapons you could think of, and some that you may even forget existed. Um, let's use the guide in booklet to go up the names because I can't remember all these. So of course we have Sword, also known as Blazing Sword, and then the Lance and the long and short versions. We've got uh, the, let's see, the Kilders, as they're known here, is the um, A-type, and B-type. The A-type is what I had on the helicopters earlier because those are more animation accurate. The B-type are more toy accurate, a larger size. And then these are, of course, smaller to fit in the combinations. 
Uh, then we also have spin cutter A and spin cutter B. These, of course, are the three rotors that you would see him using as weapons. And then these are the um, the actual ones that are used kind of for the blazing sword slash when they're being thrown. Uh, we get the electromagnetic whip or the electro whip, the handle for that, another piece there, those individual pieces almost forgot the spin cutter connection joints. Uh, we've got the shot arrow and uh, yeah, all the stand parts. And then eight hands. They really decked this guy out. Uh, a lot of the go line accessories were for the lions since there was a lot of individual like lion weapons. But this one actually has a lot more for the combination. So uh, going into this, we're gonna put these on. So this is the stand for everything. It's a pretty quick and easy assembly. I think a lot easier than the GoLine one. And naturally we had two placards. One says a Voltron and one says Armored Fleet Die Rugger 15. I'm gonna go with Voltron uh, just from personal preference here. So that goes on there. Pretty nice that that's there. Underneath is where you'll find pegs for all the hands to go. I'm not gonna plug them all in in the video, but they'll all go there, which is really handy. Um, so you got that. Uh, there's no other place to put this. I'm just gonna put that back in the box. There's also no place to put the spin cutter joints. I'm kind of thinking of pegging them onto the spin cutters and then plugging those onto here. Um, but yeah, let's take a look. So first up, uh, here is the little antenna pieces from the C vehicles. So we're gonna plug this one on here, just so that's stored. And then these two slot in here, like that, and like that. So that way those are kind of, you know, stored and safe. So this piece here actually all relates to the back of the head. Uh, if you recall, I've mentioned this a few times it popped off. This piece is the standard head backing, which has the little wheels for the vehicle mode. You can pull that off, put this on to represent when the electro whip is used. And the electro whip here is a, this is the handle piece, which is similar to this. So it doesn't peg to the back, but there's a little peg there and this is the Electro whip effect. Very, very animation accurate. Uh, this can peg in either direction. So if you want them curving it this way, or if you want it curving that way, and then you take any, either of the, no, it's not either of the open hands, only the blue open hand like that. And it's got a little peg in the palm or a slot in the palm. So you've got that. Again, I'm not gonna display them with all these weapons in the video, but you can kind of see how the electro whip would kind of work in a pose. Uh, so it looks really good and dynamic. I do like that one a lot. Um, but again, I don't ever want to recommend putting this piece on because I did it once and I couldn't get it off. Uh, so we're actually going to put that on the stand here. It just clips on nice and easy there. But yeah, there's like no way to grab it off because there's no tab or anything on the back of the head. So it makes it a very difficult process to remove it once it's on. And I can't even get this piece to go on now because I'm not lining it up. There we go. And then the Electro Whip handle, it doesn't peg in, it just kind of rests right here, but that is an option for that. We'll put the Electro Whip on in a bit. So, while on that note, let's talk about the other easy weapon, the Shot Arrow. The Shot Arrow, uh, he only used this a couple times, like only once or twice. And I found that this one's actually easier for Die Rugger to hold in the toy hands if you open it up and clip it around, the ones these start it with as the other hands to hold the sword kind of are a lot tighter of fit and i'm worried that there's gonna be some paint rub because there's really no way to get this around it doesn't separate at all um, so i kind of recommend doing that to the toy hands but this is cool because actually well it looks like a rope it's got a rope like covering uh it actually is a bendy wire so you can get this thing kind of positioned however you like um so got that going on kind of like that so Really cool stuff. This is kind of like a, a grappling hook sort of weapon, uh, which is pretty neat. And this actually will peg on the back here. So this part will clip here and kind of line that up. And then the other part has to clip there. So I just kind of do this and clip it like that. So it's kind of, kind of got that little wire out the back. Um, not a weapon I use a lot. It is totally an option. I love that it's included, but I don't use that one a lot. Uh, the Electro Whip, actually, this piece just kind of rests kind of parabolically right there um, just to fit. So pretty awesome. Now, of course, we've got the lances. This is the short version of the lance, which I actually have trouble having him hold. Um, if we just bring his hand in here, like this. So I've noticed that when I try to get him to hold this one, it doesn't really 
want to wedge well in his hand at all. Like, it kind of gets there, but it won't get past that clearance. So I was like, kind of like, what hand do I use with it? And I really don't have an answer. Um, the open hands to hold this stuff, I guess he's just supposed to kind of hold it like that. That's my solution there, but otherwise I really don't know. Um, that one goes there. This one though, on the other hand, this thing is huge and it's cool. Um, it doesn't split, it's one giant chrome piece. Uh, you can kind of get it to wedge through here. I tend to just have him use these hands, it's a lot easier for the lance part. And this will just go in and this just lines up like that and you can hold it. So pretty cool overall. It's nice that they included the lances, uh, especially since I think the lance is like the third most used weapon behind the spin cutters and the sword. So got that. So the big lance goes on the bottom. No, the big lance goes on the top, the short lance goes on the bottom. I always think it's the reverse, but you got that going on. Uh, of course, we've got the sword. We'll take a look at last. Let's take a look at all the spin cutters. So like I said, these two, these are, you know, combination ones. These are bigger versions of those. So if you want a toy accurate look with the individual helicopters, if you want the show accurate look with the individual helicopters, you use those. And then if you want him to use the spin cutter weapons like this, we have these hands. These hands are specifically designed to hold spin cutters. They have the peg there. So you just line this up like that, bring that around and then peg it into the hand like this comes around lines up and that looks fantastic so he's actually i'm actually going to do a pose with him like this in a bit so you've got that going on and then you have these other spin cutters now these can either be used um, as throwing versions these stand pegs which i've not opened because there's no place to put them on the stand these actually what you can do is peg them into this uh, if you can imagine just for a minute this pegs in and then you can put a tamashi stage so if he has not throwing them because these are kind of like the thrown ones as well. These could also be, you have plenty of options here, but these specifically, I think, are meant to be for when he forms the sword. Now, getting them to hold it, that can be tricky, but if you do it like this, it kind of sort of lines up. I think these are more for throwing because um, it's just, it's really tight and I don't want to break the peg in the hand. It's, these are really solid hands, like they're not very malleable. So I think these are more kind of your thrown versions. Um, like, here's the other thing too, if you didn't want to have like a a more toy accurate look of him like using these rotors specifically, it's totally doable. Same peg size, so you got that. If you want the spin cutters of the powered kind to be on the helicopters, you have that option too. They all fit the same peg roughly, so if you want intense spinning, that's an option there. Um, so I think that's pretty neat that it's all compatible on the same peg system. So pretty nice overall. Now, of course, these all have to load into the stand. So we've got these have to go like this, basically mirror them on either side. So if you do that, and then you do this piece like this, and then come over here, peg this on here like that. And these will peg on top. I'm not gonna do the opposite side, but basically they have to overlap, so it's like the two blade ones will go there and then the three blade ones go on top. Um, now, the question you might be asking, what if I'm using a couple, well, what if I'm not having him use any blades? How do I get all the spin cutters on here? And the answer is, well, it's kind of not designed for that. So while you can get, we'll get this out for a moment. So if you can kind of get everything on here, like so, you still have these two left behind. So if you don't want these on the robot, and you want to show accurate robot and having hold no weapons or hold the lances or something, uh, you're kind of stuck without it. So if you put the sword here, which the sword goes there, there's no place to put it. But if you have them holding the sword and you're like, oh, you shouldn't have the rotors because they become the sword. I found you can just kind of lay them down there, which is pretty nice. And if you have them holding any variation of these, like I'm going to have them hold these just to show off articulation a bit. We do that, and then these will peg right on here, like that, and like that. So you've got that going on. Like I said, uh, these are lighter pegs, so I don't know if they'll fit uh, necessarily on the pegs. So since I'm not planning to use these, I'm just going to put them back in the box. Kind of a bummer that there's no place to put them on the stand. It almost feels like they were a bit of an afterthought, um, so I'm not exactly sure what happened there. And then, of course, oh, 
one of the rarest fell. Last piece is the Blazing Sword. Bigger than the Lion Voltron one, that's for sure. It's really pointy, by the way, I just discovered that. Really nice reflective chrome, but you still got the gold there as well. And this, now while the other weapons have trouble fitting in the hand, this one, boom, it's on, it's good to go. So that's fantastic. Uh, and so in addition to that, we also have standard fists for the animation accurate look. So it's kind of nice because it follows a lot of Soldier Goken traditions of being able to give you a toy accurate option if it's recreating an old toy, but also show accurate option. Uh, and this guy, like I said, just comes with so much that you really shouldn't run out of things to pose him with. So as you can see with the articulation in this guy, he looks awesome, just ready to slice and dice some Robeast with his blades. And honestly, it's one of my favorite things of this robot is the fact that he doesn't just have like a big old sword uh, or like, you know, something with the laser lances. He actually has like these smaller blades that he's just ready to come up and scrap with. Uh, one of my favorite shots of animation in any Super Robot production is that shot of Die Rugger running, grabbing the shoulder blades and then slamming them together to form the sword. Uh, so is my dream realized? Can I actually get the two blades to meet? Uh, it's close enough. It's, it's close. It's, they touch. They touch with a little bit of work. It's very, very close. He can, he can kind of, the, the hands do move out a little bit to pull this off. And yeah, it's kind of awkward, but boom, jump cut to sword. So as you can see, not only can he make the spin cutters touch each other at least, the sword gets double wielded. Uh, this is absolutely impressive. Like I said with uh, the Lion Voltron, I was like, how is this even possible that there is enough articulation to pull this off? And honestly, I still don't know. Uh, I'm looking at this like it's, it's, it's stretching every joint. Wrist joints are popped out. Shoulder joints are popped out. Like this thing is going pretty deep to get this pose, but hey, it looks pretty natural there. I'm like, let me put the camera down a little bit. You can see he's got a solid stance too. Like he's not going anywhere. It's it's really impressive. Um, now, much like with the Lion Voltron, while I like the option, I also kind of like him to not be like fully like stretch forward trying to, to reach that. But the fact it gets around the chest yet too because of the way that folds down. Look at that. It it pulled it off. It, it's, it's really impressive. That does it for this review. Please hit the like button and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can see all future videos from the channel. There will be some more Super Robot stuff in the future. Maybe not a solo Chigokin for a while as I need to recuperate funds from two very expensive purchases. But the Big O is on my radar. That's one I want to get someday, and I'll definitely review it uh, the day I do. And on top of that, stay tuned for future Power Rangers Lightning Collection, Marvel Legends, Star Wars Black Series reviews here on this channel, as well as some other 80s character goodness. I have some Ninja Turtle reviews I have been planning uh, for a little bit now, so stick around. And also check out Ryan Dark Class 643 on Twitter, Dark Class 643. He's my graphic designer for the channel. He does awesome art commissions, so check him out. And be sure to stay tuned to Hero Club at hero-club.com for all of your Voltron news and more. Till next time, this is Sad Outside. Goodbye.